Hello again from Digicore Things. This is just a quick follow up to my earlier video where I created my first TMS 9929A based video card for the minimalist Europe card bus. That video ended with me showing the first assembled PCB card successfully working on its initial test, which kind of blew me away, although I had no reason to expect that it wouldn't work first time. The video did end with the board not quite 100% assembled. For initial testing purposes, I hadn't yet fitted the TMS RGB module to the PCB. I also hadn't completed the conversion of a Genesis 2 RGB SCART cable for plugging into the Minidin RGBS output connector of the card. In addition, the initial test had just used the original prototype's Arduino code, unchanged. This was of course intentional, as I wanted to ensure I was recreating the prototype's test, but this time on the finished PCB card. As a result, the code was only using the low nibble of the video memory, as the prototype was built using a single 4464 dynamic RAM for the proof of concept. Therefore, the test wasn't even taking advantage of the full byte-wide video RAM that we now have on the PCB. So let's start off by taking a look at the finished PCB. As you can see, it is now complete and self-contained, without any wires hanging off. The TMS RGB module is soldered in place behind the VDP chip with a 4-pin right-angle PCB header routing the output signals back onto the PCB and through to the mini-DIN connector. You'll also notice a single bodge wire on the back of the PCB. As explained in the earlier video, this PCB was ordered before I finalised the circuit that was presented in the original prototype design video. Although this initial PCB worked just fine as it was, the bodge wire simply implements the final schematic circuit as I presented. It just ensures that the memory access timing is even more robust. Next we have a commonly available Genesis 2 RGB SCART cable. As also explained in the earlier video, these cables come with 75 ohm upper resistors integrated into the cable, which we do not want. The TMS RGB board includes the output resistors on board, which quite frankly is where they belong. Fortunately, these resistors are very easy to remove, as the SCART connector housing is easily dismantled by unscrewing the cover giving easy access to desolder and remove the three 75 ohm output resistors. With the cover off, you should be able to see there's three resistors, which also go through three isolating um, electrolytic capacitors. So it's a simple case of desoldering the wires from the resistors and similarly desoldering the resistor from the capacitor then reattaching the wire directly to the capacitor. It's worth keeping the isolation capacitors. Okay, I'll show you the finished lead. So this is the lead I've been using, which I've already converted. And you can see on here, there are no resistors and the, and the wires just attached directly to the isolation capacitors. If the resistors were left in place in the cable, the picture brightness would be greatly reduced. So with the card inserted back into the back plane, and 
and the mini DIN output cable plugged in. We can now see a tidy and finished video card. So let's power it up again and have a quick look at the Arduino code changes I made to fully enable both the full byte wide video memory testing and also to utilize the full byte in the video output pattern test. These Arduino code changes, which include now using the full byte wide video memory, the addition of byte wide color table options, and a few more code comments has also been committed to the published GitHub repository. Let's take a quick look at these changes and then I'll run the code again so we can see an improved output now that we are using the full byte width of the video memory. This time I'll also show you the serial output, logging the memory tests and output color changes. So this is the Arduino VDP test code that I walked through in the earlier video. I'll just show you the changes I've made to support using the full byte wide memory that we now have on the finalized PCB. If I scroll down to the VRAM test, first off you can see that I've uncommented the test values array that contains full byte values. These are all zeros, zero, zero and all ones, FF, and then the alternate zeros and ones, 55, five, and also alternate ones and zeros, AA. And similarly, I've commented out the test values array we were using before, which was just the low nibble. Now, if we move on to the VRAM setup, specifically the test pattern zero in the pattern table. I've commented out the nibble wide graphics character we were using and uncommented the code which contains a full byte wide test pattern which is the character A, capital A. Okay and then we go down to the color table setup. Originally I just had the setup byte of zero one which was transparent for the on bits which is controlled by the upper nibble which we didn't have at the time so of course that was always zero and black or color zero, uh, zero one for all the off bits. Now I've added a whole lot more commented out values which uh, are the different colors for the foreground now that we have a full byte wide memory again with black for the off bits which is color uh, zero one. In addition the uncommented code is writing a value of F4, which is white for the on bits, color 15 or F, and dark blue for the off bits, which is color 4. Uh, just in playing around, this was my favorite one to test with. And that's basically it. So if I compile and upload that code, Okay, with the code changes compiled and uploaded, I'll now show you a video camera capture of my monitor as well as the um, serial monitor output. And then I'll hit reset so you can see the initial memory test occurring and then as it cycles through the colors. Just note that I'm capturing this with a video camera um, so it is capturing the actual screen output I'm seeing, although the camera does pick up artif video artifacts and uh, also the autofocus um, means the colour isn't too true, but it's enough to show you how well it works. Okay, I'll hit reset now. And you can see the initial memory test, all test passed. And it clears the video RAM, um, sets up the pattern table and name table and color table. Then you can see it just loops through changing the backdrop color.
and as you recall the color table was set up for a dark blue for the off bits and white for the on bits and you can see the a pattern repeated in white with the blue background um, with just the backdrop color changing every two seconds So that's all for the quick update. I'll now get back to focusing on the CPU board. That's it. Thanks for watching.